Hey guys, what's going on? Adam Manny here from Business of Strength and Business of Strength Education. So today we're just going to talk about the three key pillars of effective programming. And I know a lot of the times things can get lost in the weeds. How do I truly program? What's the design? What all these different things, principles, ideologies, what have you, a lot of buzzwords right now in the industry. However, you have to remember this sole concept here before we drive, dive, excuse me, into these three parts, right? What is your business model? Are you an independent trainer and you do private? Are you an independent trainer and you work with groups? Do you have large groups? Are you actually in a business? Do you have a brick and mortar facility? Do you just do online programming? All of those things are going to change the way in which you shape your programming. Sure, there's underlying principles that adhere to everybody, such as stress, volume, frequency, different assessments, compensations. But ultimately, if you are doing something and getting into the weeds, but you're running a business, you are going to become the bottleneck of your training process. So something that we're going to talk about today are three key pillars of effective programming, not necessarily the ins and outs, if you will. So number one is a belief system that aligns with your business. We just talked about it, but I want to dive deeper a little bit into this. The first question you have to ask yourself is what is the end goal? How am I gonna train people? Do I just train people one-on-one? -on -one? Do you work with high-level pros and high-level individuals? Am I gonna work in a group setting? So maybe you have a smaller group of eight to 10, but you break them up based upon their abilities. Well, that's gonna require a different level of programming. Do you run bigger groups, such as bigger high school groups, where maybe you're working with 10, 20, 30 people at a time? Well, you're not gonna be able to get into the weeds as much as you normally would if you're working in a private training session. Obviously, time, care, attentiveness, all are gonna matter. But also when it comes to aligning your business model, you have to know what is the end goal. How am I gonna train the most amount of people? How am I gonna ensure that I deliver an awesome service? How am I gonna get the best results possible? So what is the end goal, right? Do you align your training model with your business? That is super important. Number two, a training system templates and warmups, right? Again, this is gonna fall underneath the umbrella of what is the end goal. Hey, what's going on guys? Hopefully you find the information in this video useful. We're trying to put out consistent content and information regarding training principles, systems, and business strategy that you can use in your training business on a weekly basis. If you find it useful, go ahead, drop kick the like button, subscribe, do whatever they tell you to do. Let's get back to the video. So if I have my training system, if you get into the weeds, so we love speed here. We have a lot of data and metrics. We work with large groups, individuals. We work with pros. We work with juniors. But the way that we program for each is very similar, and then we adjust as we see fit. So you need to ensure that does your training system align with that end goal here. If you're calculating data on a spreadsheet, if you're getting into the weeds on the biomechanics and you're filming everything and a training session is taking you maybe an hour and a half, two hours, well, guess what? You're bleeding energy from your end goal. You're not being able to train as many people as possible. Lastly, C is measured success. This is one of the things that everybody knows, right? Do I have enough training information and knowledge? Do I know about biomechanics? Do I know about anatomy? Do I know how to run assessments and respiration? Do I know about programming principles, volume, frequency, intensity? Do I know about, in terms of hierarchy within a training session, more of my main output nervous system based work followed by muscular, followed by my sensory input work, followed by my least effective work, meaning CNS and overload intensity. We know all of those things. But that is not what measured success is. That is just your individual training knowledge. What measured success is, is can this happen at scale? And this is something that we need to think about and focus on, right? Can I know how each individual is improving? Meaning, do I use a software platform? Meaning, do we have numbers and measures for each training session and how we build upon those training sessions? So these are three keys of effective programming, things to think about, guys. We'll see you in the next video.